it's it's really interesting when you look at the amount of force needed for a whiplash versus a concussion because you what you've said previously is four and a half g's is all you need for a whiplash injury and you've said 100 percent of all concussion patients will have a whiplash injury because a concussion's happening in that 70 to 120 g's and the whiplash is only occurring at four and a half so of course the client the client or the patient is going to have a whiplash injury so 100 percent of concussion patients will have a whiplash injury but not the other way around like a whiplash injury in isolation won't have a concussion yes. can you just delve into that a little bit and while you're there what do you do to delineate between the two uh i'll answer the first question first the concussion injury happening 70 to 120 g's so obviously you know your head and your neck are connected so anytime you're going to have 70 to 120 g's happening at the head you're going to probably get you know similar type forces happening through the neck probably just a little bit less and, but if you flip it, you know, if you get four and a half G's to your neck, you know, you may have slightly more going on in the head, but probably not enough to cause concussion injury. Now, a really bad whiplash can now accelerate the head to 70 to 120 G's, which could now start creating concussion injury in the brain. Um, delineating the two is very challenging because the symptoms are very similar. And, um, a lot of this comes down to kind of manual examination. Does the person have, you know, ridiculous symptoms down the arm? Do they have, you know, muscle spasm in their neck? Can I recreate the symptoms with palpation on certain trigger points in the neck? Um, those types of things, um, concussion is almost like a, almost a diagnosis of exclusion, but it's become the default diagnosis. In my opinion, we're probably over diagnosing concussions. Um, uh, but it's better to do that because, there's more liabilities for getting it wrong, right? If you're a healthcare professional and you miss the concussion and that person ends up having issues, you know, that's going to come back and bite you. So you're better off as a healthcare professional just to treat it like a concussion. Oh, you got hit. You have headaches, dizziness, um, you know, visual disturbances. I'm going to call that a concussion, you know, every single day, but I'm also going to tell the patient, we don't actually have any way of knowing if it's concussion or if it's potentially whiplash, but I'm going to treat you as if you have both. So I'm going to work on your neck. I'm going to start doing rehab exercises. I'm going to keep you doing range of motion. I'm going to work on neck proprioception, but I'm also going to look at concussion and have you start ramping up your physical exertion for blood flow. I'm going to start having you do vestibular stuff and eye tracking stuff all simultaneously. I actually gave a presentation at a conference, um, probably three or four years ago now, but I actually proposed that we do away with the term. It, it wasn't really well received. So, <laughs> but <laughs> the, the, the proposal was that we really can't separate these two. We have no way of definitively diagnosing concussion. Um, the symptoms overlap. The mechanism of injury is the same between whiplash and concussion. They're both acceleration, deceleration injuries. And so I said, we should be looking at this as a craniocervical acceleration syndrome. It's a constellation of symptoms that come from acceleration of the head and neck. It, which one's causing, which one's driving, which one is, and we don't know. And so, but thinking about it globally like that, we're going to treat the head and the neck, but people aren't doing that. People are going, oh, it's a concussion, just rest. And that'll be fine. You know what the worst thing to do for a whiplash person is? tell them to rest and do nothing. Yeah, so exactly. You're, you're counterproductive here because the person that has a lot of, you know, neck injury that's driving their issues is, and is going to end up much, much worse off by you telling them to rest and do nothing. Whereas if we looked at it to say, okay, there's, there's possibly a concussion injury here. So we want you to take it easy from a cognitive standpoint for a couple of days. But I also, at the same time, want you to Keep your range of motion going. Make sure your neck doesn't, you know, get stiff. Uh, you know, do some light stretching and, you know, come in. We'll do a little bit of light mobilization activities. We'll maybe do a little bit of acupuncture. You know, we'll get you working on neck proprioception, that type of thing to start grooving motor patterns. And we're going to treat those two in a simultaneous fashion. Yeah. And, and your outcomes are going to be, you know, much, much, much better because even if it was just a whiplash, it doesn't matter. You took a conservative approach. You didn't let them go back to sport just in case. And, uh, and, and you basically rehab them. Um, and the same thing goes the other way, you know, okay. It was a concussion, but they also had a neck injury. So we treated it in the, in the right way. You're going to have way better outcomes.